like more so and like more than ever is you know viability um you know the future can because there's so many different you know stories like yeah you know the economists can be positive uh, about the outcome but like how are we going to get there and how are we going to you know maintain because there's other people saying the opposite which you know like to be honest scares the crap out of me um you know like you know where do we go like i don't i i definitely don't want there to be you know strife uh, civil issues you know you know this country you know breaking apart um i'm not going to get into like some of the politics of our country um but it's um it's a it's a scary thought to you know think that uh, you know canada might not be the same or things are going to change um and like you know who who's going to benefit and who's not going to benefit from some of these um some of the changes that are uh, coming down the pipe. Um, I guess one thing is, you know, the education system and, um, you know, it's, it's on a lot of people's minds. Um, we were talking about the university, but, you know, public school, like, I don't want to get too political on this, but, you know, how, when, like, who makes the decision or is it a public thing? Do, do parents go to the boards about changing some of the curriculum because stuff is outdated um and some you know really some subjects are you know null and void um you know what like like you said and like with education like what should we really be looking at like what should what should a five or six year old know like truly know versus you know not knowing your thoughts on that Look, I mean, I can only say this from the perspective of a parent, right? I'm, I'm not a, an educational theorist, but so, so I'm going to look at it from a couple of lenses. One, what is, what is going to make a child happy? The other is what is going to make them productive um, in terms of the world, right? What will make them a good contributor? What will allow them overall, you know, forget even in terms of commerce, right? It's the same thing when you're playing on a playground. There is a commerce of sorts and you need to be able to relate with other children. And you end up building good skills and it's a good metaphor for an economy, right? You're playing on a playground. You have to learn how to, you know, have manners, yield when it's, you know, when you should yield, stand your ground where you need to stand your ground and, you know, be able to assert yourself, communicate your ideas, your needs, when to say something, when not to. So that's complex, right? I mean. And, and you can't necessarily get the best results by asking kids to memorize that. It's a lot like trying to brute force, do what we're doing right now with AI. We're trying to teach it mimicry, you know, and that's what it is right now. It doesn't, a lot of AI doesn't necessarily have understanding, but with children, you can't train them like you're trying to teach them you know, computers because you've got this entire genetic kind of component built in there. So a, a lot of that education needs to just be to socialize these children a lot better than we're doing right now. And that, includes not just sticking them in front of a screen. I think we've certainly taken a lot of steps backwards by doing that going, oh, because it's the internet's available, you know, let's just make them watch this stuff every day, right? You should have this many minutes of, for a five-year-old, six-year-old, you're already starting to teach them coding, you're already starting to make them watch this much stuff. No, they should be out there, you know, looking at caterpillars, getting dirty, you know, rolling around in the mud, building that sense of, you know, falling down, getting hurt in small, you know, tolerable, safe ways and, and building up the resiliency, um, you know, bumping into one another and learning how to, you know, draw boundaries and establish them and learning how to cooperate. That, that's real world education that they're going to need. And you have to establish that at a very, at a very formative age. You, this is not stuff that you can learn with a computer as much as our, as our, um, we have this great obsession with all things tech. And because there's this mandate, so again, you know, if we're, we're going to have to talk about the politics because they're in a, there is a political agenda to demonstrate to parents, to the world that your taxpayers' dollars are doing good. Therefore, we've put a bunch of Macs in, you know, in every classroom. That, the, it, I don't think that has a necessarily good foundation if you talk to a psychologist. And it, how do we form our education system? Well, I think it needs to be a confluence of not just psychologists, but you've got to talk to an economist. You've got to talk to a psychologist. You have to talk to parents as well, who are the stakeholders, and you, you have to look at what are we trying to build for the future here? We have to build resilient human beings that are capable of living and forming sustainable societies um, that do good for one another as well as for the planet. It sounds like a, a very, you know, 
a, a very cliche, a stereotypical statement to make, but it's tremendously difficult. What we're talking about is world building. And, you know, when do you know when to, you know, when to lie and when not to? When do you try to make, you know, the sacrifice hit or over here? Th those are things that you're going to have, you know, the philosophies you have to bake in with young children at a very young age. And the ability to be able to be resilient and be able to tolerate failure is very important. And right now, I think, you know, as a parent, I can see is the, the path in which we're currently going by simplifying things in terms of their complexity uh, uh, and and trying to have an over-reliance on technology is, is not only ill-informed, it's actually very harmful. Teaching, you know, computer literacy, yes, it's great, but they should be out there learning just their basics. Teach them, you know, a seven, eight-year-old should be learning their times tables and learning rudiments. But you can't go to the new math and say, well, two plus three happens to be smiley face, lightning bolt. And as we know, smiley face, lightning bolt happens to be five. No, <laughs> sometimes there is no substitute than just, you know, taking your fingers out and counting that two plus three is five, et cetera, right? Teaching that for, you know, an SK or, or JK. There is just no substitute for just getting that done. Just like learning skills. You got to learn the skills because if you learn... It, trying to figure out if you only learn songs you're going to have a limited vocabulary in terms of what you can do you know what i mean yeah well so you've got to start off with scales and we're not teaching our kids as much scales we're trying to teach them songs i think that's probably the best metaphor and that's why they're not necessarily as resilient and as uh, applicable in the long term as they could be especially i think for